Hi, this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Uh, today I am going to show you how I paint the hydrangea design on my wedding or bridal hangers. I'm going to start off by using the uh, flat brush, the number six from Low Cornell. And then uh, this should be probably a 12, yep, 12 folk art, or I'm sorry, not folk art, but one stroke flat brush. And then as usual, I'm using the folk art enamels. This is cobalt blue. And I'm going to be using that along with hydrangea blue for my hydrangea. How, how unique. And then wicker white. The thicket green for the leaves along with my favorite leaf combination, the forest moss. I have just a little bit of paint left in that. Squeezing it out, hopefully I can get through the demo with it. And then my sunflower. Alright, so let's get started. I have already did the crackle medium on the hanger, painted it with the ivory paint, and now I'm going to start with my hydrangea flower using the number six brush. Now this is my way of doing it. Again, I, I can't stress that enough. You know, just, you know, this is just to give you ideas. And if you have a diff different painting technique, maybe how you can incorporate it into your painting style. But I'm touching, pulling it, and then pulling it back. So I have just like a little bit of a tip to the petals. And I think most of them are like f just four leaf petals for the flower. And I will need to pick this up to be able to turn it. So I'm trying to keep it into your viewing area. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. And then basically do that, pull it, pull it back. Okay, now I kind of like to layer these. I'm going to put a few that are with the blue hydrangea on the outside of the, fl the flower petals. And then I will actually put a different color, the different color blue along with it. Just kind of mix it up. I mean, honestly, if you want to make yours a five petal flower, I don't see why it wouldn't work as it would. And I'm just going to kind of space these out some too. It's so easy. I mean, it's just basically you double load your brush. And I know I haven't shown you how to do that, but you double load your brush and then you just Pull it to tip. And I think it's funny when you do you do videos and you're watching watching someone paint or have their own their own painting technique. Now like this one didn't actually finish off up down below, which I can make it do that. I'll just come down here and then come back up a little bit. Give it a little bit of a tip of, as if it's going over the edge. And that's fine, you know, either way. But what I was going to say is it's, it's interesting when you watch somebody paint or even draw that they have a tendency to do very similar things and similar styles from one piece to another. So it's almost like you really can't identify somebody's work based upon, you know, viewing their videos and seeing how much they, you know, how they paint, their painting style is, as to identifying their artwork. I'm just going to bring it down the arm just a smidge, and then I'm going to do little buds. Now, if you wanted to just stick with the two colors, you can do that. But like I said, I actually throw in the cobalt blue, mix it up a little bit, because you could just turn it and use the, see I did that petal over there, you could just 
do like white on the outer part and still have the blue, just the same hydrangea blue. But I'm, I kind of like it to have uh, two different shades of blue in them. And of course, this this flower would be cute on a on a wine glass, most definitely. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the cobalt blue for right now. I'm not cleaning my brush. I'm just going to come in here and just kind of go over where I've painted. Just kind of add to it, layer it a little bit. And just keep turning it as I go. The one thing about painting on top of the crackled paint, sometimes you have to be careful because it may start lifting off. So you really can't work it too much or you're going to actually pull the, pull the crackled part off. And I'm just going to kind of come in here, overlap a little bit. It's real random. And if you don't like how you know petal turns out, just go ahead and paint over it. Just a real easy flower to paint. So I've mentioned before in one of my other videos, I just I need to come up with some other flowers to paint. Because the painted designs do actually sell really well. And the thing of it is with the hangers, I know a lot of people that do them, you know, will glue stuff on them and whatnot. You know, the problem I have with that kind of stuff is I'm always looking at it as what if it were to fall off? And, you know, when people have the flowers that are glued to the hangers, okay, you know, that's nice. I mean, it gives it a nice look. But then what if it comes off? You know, when shipping, shipping is really rough, what if the, the, the item comes off? And then you've got, you know, a hanger that's not really completely made correctly any longer. I mean, not that it wasn't made correctly to begin with, but it's not what you wanted it to be. And you would be surprised about how many people would not be would not be able to fix it. You know, most people would say, okay, well, I'll just glue it back on, no biggie. But then you've got a lot of people that complain. And I just try to like to avoid as much of that as, po as I possibly can. It's hard enough sometimes with the hand painting when people, you know, want, even though they're, they're hand painted individually, so no two are going to be identical. They might be similar, but they're not identical. You still get people that, well, you know, this, this flower is darker than that flower. Well, you know, they're hand painted. But when you add other items onto the hanger, like crystals and whatnot, if they're not actually wired on, they're glued, then you're always at risk of it falling off. Always at risk of that. And I really like to eliminate that factor as much as possible. Now just so you know, I am not washing this brush off while I'm painting it. I am going to go back to the hydrangea and then I'm going to turn my brush. Yes, yeah, so and I can go up in here a little bit. And you can also do this to where you're not completely painting off for for turned wrong all four petals that you're just painting you know two based on where the flower is landing that's fine I just like to keep layering it that's my preference
All right. Like I said, I apologize again for my lack of video skills here. So if you can't see something, I, I apologize. I'm trying to keep it where I marked so you can see what I'm doing. Oops, I did it again. Got hooked into doing it the blue way first on the outside. Now I can't get that out of my head. Alright, you kind of get the gist of what I'm doing on this. I just think it adds some more interest in it to have a variation of colors. That's a little dry. Got to be careful because I don't want to, like I mentioned before, I don't want to work the paint too much over this crackle medium. So I may just leave it at this because I'm afraid that I'm starting to do that. Like I said, you don't have to layer it as much as I am. Definitely don't have to do that. So if you have any suggestions of flowers that you think would be pretty on the wedding dress hangers, I would love to hear your suggestions. I think I might just go back through here and add a little bit of the cobalt blue back over the tops just a smidge. Try not to work it too much. I'll do this a little bit over in here. And then just do a little bit of trailing buds down the down the arm here. I just have to be careful where the paint is thicker because that's where it tends the tendency to lift and of course I'm not drying it in between you can dry it in between if you want I'm just not a very patient painter it's kind of why I like painting techniques where you can just paint them and go and you also can start off by painting your leaves or some of your leaves first if you choose to do so and that looks nice too because now I'm just going to have to throw some leaves into this mix okay I think I'm going to leave it like that and then I need to add in those trailing little flowers down the arms I'm floating out of the camera view sorry I just like to use like little buds like this. Pretty easy. And I repeat 
repeat it over on the other side. It's sorry right if this video is a little bit long, but I like to show the, the painting videos as much as possible. And I know I owe you the last design I, I painted. Clear this up a little bit on the glass. But I needed to get this done for a for a shipment, so thought I'll throw this in now and I can do that later on this week. have them come up on the top here and I'll do it over this direction Okay, and then I'm going to go back in and just put a little dot. I'm not real good with dots, I apologize, but as I've said in some of my other videos, they're not my, my best thing to paint. I just kind of randomly dot. You know, if you think that maybe part of a flower is underneath that would have a dot in it, you can do that. That that's covering up just to give it some some difference in color that kind of thing and you can even come through here and dot on here oops that would have not been in the right place all right so there we have that part of it now i'm going to move on to the leaf Need to get that brush cleaned up before I start. All right, so on the leaf part, I am going to do the thicket green and the forest moss, which, like I said, the two two combinations of these two paints are my favorite by far of any two combinations for leaves. My hands are wet. All right, so typically I start with doing my I want to do my my petals for my you know trying to get these guys attached. And I just touch the brush, go on, touch the brush, go on, touch it, pull it, touch. And then we can try to put through what we would say would be like a little vine. Make it more distinct. But then I'm also going to come through and paint some, some ones, just the simple one stroke kind of leaves. Push and pull, push and pull. And again with this, it's just kind of placing them where you want them to go. There's no scientific, uh, they have to be a certain way, or even a certain size, and you can do them uh, to where they're going different directions add some down here if you wanted to you now just however however you want to place them and then I'm going to go back down this side and do it again do it to these and again I'm just just touching and pulling touching and pulling like so they covered up the 
where I placed the yellow, just covered it up with the this greenery, and then uh, let's see, and then do the same thing as far as like the little trying to connect them with the little vine kind of deal. Paint all over my brush. And do the same thing as far as painting me. Just kind of push, you can make it like that, add to the end. Do that. If you want to run veining in them, you can. I don't always do that. It's just a matter of, you know, if I feel like doing it or not. You know, where you just go in like that to add the connecting piece, which I don't like how that one turned out. So I'm just go back in and go over it. All right, and then I go back in, and if you want to hit this with a hair dryer, you can. But you can just continue to add. Now oh, I got too much paint on there. Okay, so I'm really trying to squeeze out this forest moss. So I'm sorry if it's I'm not getting as much forest moss on here as I want. Maybe you can come come in here and just kind of add. Your little, or you can do, you know, other fla uh, other styles of leaves too if you want. And more of a fuller leaf with some wiggle in it. So you can come in here and like add a little vining structure to it. I just have to be careful I'm not touching what I already painted. I have a tendency to do that as well. Did I do that already? That color on my brush I'm like oh my gosh hopefully I did not do that already all right let me get these in here first just to add you know, add a little bit of interest to it I mean fuller leaves you know some that have some wiggling to it they're bigger leaves you can do that too if you want I'm just going to go back through and try to just put a little bit of vining in it it's not real important just really lightly I guess if you can see where maybe doing the leaves first would be really a nice touch but for the purpose of of the hangers and the video I'm just doing just doing it like this it's good enough good enough you get the gist all right I think I'm gonna stop with that because I don't want it to be too heavy with the leaves but anyways, there you go. So that is a hanger that will be going out this week with the personalized wire name across here. And then she'll hang her wedding dress on it for photos. All right, I'm done with this. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. Please like and share, I'd appreciate it. Look forward to my next video, which will be uh, painting the chrysanthemums on a Pilsner bear glass and this video is a hand painted wedding dress hanger with the hydrangea flowers the blues the hydrangea blue and the cobalt blue and wicker white and thanks for stopping by I will see you in the next video thank you have a good day
All right, I'm going to go ahead and do a brushstroke video on the hydrangea. Now, typically, if you see a hydrangea, the uh, actual flower itself, the flower petals are typically in more in a round shape as opposed to what I just did in the in the video on the hangers, which with the hangers being so much different than you know the space wise it's really difficult to do that so I'm just going to just do a quick demo on painting the actual flower petals and once again I'm just pushing the brush I again I'm going to start by just placing these petals the flower petals I think if I do tip. And try to do them more in a rounded shape. But I'm still going to do my layering. I still like the layering. And you could just stop, just use one color. You know, like the one color combination, I should say. Which would be two colors, but like say with the hydrangeas, you could just do the blue and the white. I mean, that would be fine. You don't have to switch it up with different colors like I do. And you can do them with more, more petals than what I'm showing. I'm doing mine pretty big just for the point of the demonstration. Hopefully it makes it easier to see. And it may not be perfectly round, but I'm going to attempt to do as a round of one as I can. Alright, so then I'm going to go to the cobalt blue and start adding that. I probably should have put some of this in the middle too. I don't know why. why I didn't, but I didn't. And I'm not, once again, not washing off my brush in between. And I'm using the bigger brush on this too. I just realized that. And I'm not drying it in between right now, so you're going to see a mixture of colors, but that's fine. Just for the point of the demo, and you can you know let yours sit for an hour or dry it with a hair dryer to speed it up. Purely up to you. Oops, I did the wrong blue. Sorry about that. Actually fun to paint. And I am painting this on palette paper. I think I showed my previous demo on, on palette paper too. Palette paper, wax paper. You know, whatever you have that's that's if you want to practice on something, either one will do. Or even glass. You know, gloss plate. A glass, uh, just a you know piece of glass. Could use a uh, what is it? One of the cutting boards that are made out of glass. You know, obviously that you're not going to use for food. I wouldn't recommend that for food usage afterwards. But <clears throat> it can be cleaned and then reused for different painting designs. Oops, got some green in that one. No more green. So 
not what I was trying for. I'm not sure where that came from, but oops. I'm just gonna make it worse. <laughs> oh well. Hopefully you get the gist of it. This can be my blooper for today. Alright, so then I'm going to switch back to my white, my wicker white, and my hydrangea. And then start adding in some of, some of these flowers going this direction. And I know I say this a lot, and I'm sorry if you get tired of hearing me say it, but I really want you to do your painting to fit your preference. You know, if you see something and maybe you like something I'm doing, but maybe not the entire thing, then switch it up when you're doing yours and make it, make it the way you think it should look or that you like. You know, it's not all about I hate when things people think things have to be exactly a certain way. You know, it's just, they don't. We don't all have to be the same cookie cutter or made out of the same cookie cutter. I love creativity. And see, so this is where I'm talking about where you can just do maybe a couple petals and not the whole thing. If you wanted to say you liked how this looked and you just wanted to add, you can do that too, if that makes sense. I just typically end up doing the whole, the whole flower. Let's see, with layering it, you just get, you know, a little touch of, of everything. And, I mean, I think it's, it's a nice little, a nice look. I'm going to come back in and maybe throw some more of the hydrangea in here. Now I could turn this around and just use it, the white on the outer part too, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to keep it with the blue on the outer part for the cobalt one. Because the thing of it is when you're layering it, you're going to end up covering some of the stuff you've already painted anyways. So, and you just kind of stand back and say, hmm, I think I need some more of the, of the cobalt blue over here, or um, maybe more of the hydrangea over here, just, you know, with how your eye flows. I think I might add just a little bit of cobalt over here. All right, so I've got my pretty much like a ball. You can keep going with this, this if you want. I mean, I could probably keep going and going and going. But then with this type of a flower, if you're going to actually do the, the flowers, I mean, you would do a vine and then put leaves at the bottom of it, but just for the sake of, of doing something similar to what I was doing in my video with the hangers, you can come back and do it like that, or even come in the middle if you wanted to put some, some uh, leaves in the middle, but I was talking about with the bigger, you know, bigger type leaves, I keep getting paint on my brush. I'm not dipping it into is just for the point of the video um, or just you know if you wanted to make it make just the flowers kind of deal and not paint it on a like the hanger like I'm doing keep in mind it's a small area to paint in but you can do some of the bigger leaves you know where you're actually just kind of going like that and wiggle on them Wiggling them down and then pulling this through to give it a vine, you know, like it's attached to the flower. I mean, that's 
but I would start like at the base if you're going to actually paint the actual flower. But there wasn't a whole lot of space, so I just basically stuck to the one stroke. And this is where I'm talking about if you want to add like the little veiny kind of things into it. And I got more blue on my thing. You do that. Or you can do it lighter. And my paint is just kind of glopping up because I've had it out. But anyhow, you can do do the leaves, you know, like that. Or um, there's just such a variety of different leaves and styles of painting them. It's just amazing how you can, you know, paint it so differently. But I I like the bigger leaves. I just find like on the hanger though it's kind of uh, a little bit of blue in there. Of course I did. Put more paint on my brush, but I'm running out of my green. Sorry, I like my green. That. And then I would come through, like I did on the bigger one, or the hanger, and just put the simple little dots in the middle. And this is where I'm talking about when I see a little bit of a different color underneath, and I may still go ahead and put a center in it, even if maybe there really isn't a center that should be there. I don't know. I can't see all of it, so I don't know, right? there. All right, so I have that. And then two, I didn't paint the little, I didn't show you, my paintbrush is getting gooped up, but if you wanted to do like the little buds, just even make them look nicer, I just do, and you can make your tips t pointier if you want, but just pull them out, pull them out and then do your little binding on it, put them in. I need to wash my brush off. I get more of the proper color in there. And then just do. I like said so you can add the dot in there if you want. Like you can see maybe the inside of it a little bit. It just kind of gives it some more color. Make these more up in here. You can make them thinner. It's really whatever it is you want to do. So anyways, there you go. Uh, that's the brush stroke demo for you. And uh, I appreciate once again, if you uh, like my video, subscribe, share. It's always appreciated. And again, until the next video, have a good evening.